We made it all the way to conversation number five. In Sue Johnson's fifth conversation for a lifetime of love, we are learning to forgive injuries. Certain attachment injuries run much deeper than just raw spots or hurt feelings. They become relationship traumas that can be defined as a wound that plunges us into fear and helplessness and challenges our assumptions of predictability and control. There is no greater trauma than to be wounded by the people we care for the most and count on to protect and support us. When our partner fails to respond in an emotionally supportive way in a crucial moment of need, it can eclipse hundreds of smaller positive events and destroy the security in our relationship. We begin to question our loved one's dependability, plunging the relationship into distress, or further fraying the already fragile bonds. The injured partner often feels abandoned or emotionally unsupported. Supported. Unresolved traumas do not heal. And until the incident is confronted and resolved, true accessibility and emotional engagement are strained or even impossible. The only way to confront and heal these injuries is to do it together. The first goal for partners is forgiveness. The ultimate goal is a renewed trust. There are six steps to forgiving injury conversations. The first being that the injured partner needs to speak their pain as openly and as simply as possible. They must stay focused on describing the pain, the specific situation in which it occurred, and how it affects their sense of safety with their partner without building a case against the injuring party. Once the wound has been described and pinpointed for the injuring partner, healing can begin. Step two is that the injured partner must remain emotionally present, acknowledging their partner's pain and their part in it. The injured partner must feel their pain has been truly recognized and it helps to remember that mistakes in loving relationships are inevitable and even though partners have hurt each other in the past, they can change how these traumas affect their future. Step three is that the partners must begin to revise their old script and reverse their never again language. The injured partner must be allowed to show the depths of their loneliness, grief, and despair. In step four, the injuring partner must now take ownership of how they have injured their lover and be willing to express regret and remorse. They must listen to and engage with their partner's pain as well as be able to show that their lover's pain has impacted them. A well-crafted apology includes these five elements. Caring about their partner's pain, validating that the pain is warranted, owning up to your own hurtful actions, expressing shame for your behavior, and finally a reassurance that you will help your partner heal the pain moving forward. In step five, once the apology has been made, a hold me tight conversation can take place. The injured partner identifies what they need right now to bring closure to the trauma and how they would like their partner to respond differently moving forward. And finally, in step Step six, the couple must create a new story that captures the injuring event, how it happened, and how eroded trust and connection shaped their demon dialogues. The story must include how they confronted their trauma together and began to heal it. They discuss how they can continue to heal this injury and prevent future injuries together as a team moving forward. Understanding attachment injuries and knowing how to find and offer forgiveness gives you incredible power to create resilience and a lasting bond. There are no injury-proof relationships, but learning how to recover makes your partnership stronger and better equipped to overcome any challenges that will inevitably come your way. Please join us next week as we talk about bonding through sex and touch. And until next week, happy marriaging.